Uh, so, hey, friends, you have either had 20 seconds and a smash cut or two minutes of this so far. So you're welcome. Welcome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> welcome. I feel we like had you a small, Yeah. You had a small hiatus and uh, now we're back for your airwaves and all of your feral needs, or at least our feral needs, which our is feral needs. <laughs> which right. what we're here to do. So. <laughs> Ladies, anything you want to say as we rejoin for the show that is uh, because I couldn't like eliminate it, I just want to point out because I'm I'm really owning this, right? There is a yeah. moving box behind me. I want everybody to pay attention to my ugly ass moving box in the background because mm -hmm. I am a goddamn professional. That's right. <laughs> not mover. I'm not a professional mover. Don't call me to move your shit. You won't yeah. like it. <laughs> no, she's the mover and shit for the third time in like a year and a half. Mm -hmm. Uh this is two moves in two years. Yeah. Okay. Oof. So. No, this is the third though, right? Because there was Japan to the house. Oh, yes. no, I guess that's two. I guess yeah, that's I mean, I'm kind of counting moving from Virginia to New England as one move. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Um, Fair. But yeah, this is just it. I it, just forgot it's how to count. Extended process because we had to move out of my beautiful brand new house that I sold into this beautiful older house that my husband owns with his family. Um, and we are staying here. We stayed here for a couple of months while I finished working, and uh, which happened last night. And uh, yes, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And then, uh, and then on Saturday we drive north to move to New England. Woo! Woo! A whole new, it's exciting. New yes, yeah. it is exciting. It is, you guys. I'm excited. Um, there's a lot. There's so much to be grateful for, and I'm really trying to like lean into that instead of leaning into the there's so many boxes to unpack <laughs> so much work it's so much fun. work but it's, it's gonna be good really because good. this yeah. is this is gonna be an awesome move for our family we're gonna be up north my husband's got this like amazing job opportunity and i think he's really gonna like it um the team that he's gonna be working with seems really cool and i think he's i think it's gonna be good for him not just like professionally but also just like you know, socially, he'll make a bunch of new friends that are awesome and who couldn't use more awesome new friends. So, yeah. right. Yeah. And uh, we got it. We got a pretty cool house that we're closing on next week. And yeah. uh, we're going to take, I'm going to take, so here's my plan in case oh. I know none of you care, Ooh. but here you go. This is, I care. We oh, care. Thanks. Yeah. For Let's be clear. Um, uh, the plan is uh, I'm going to take like basically a full week and just concentrate on unpacking what's going on. Um, and just concentrate on like unpacking right? and kind of balls to the wall, put shit away. Mm -hmm. And then on the ninth, which will be the, you know, the following Monday, um, mm -hmm. I'm hoping to be enough unpacked that I can start in with like, okay, this is our regular homeschool. These are my regular writing hours. These are my regular like housekeeping hours during which time I will finish putting shit away. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Routines. Yeah. Absolutely. Nice. Fingers crossed. But yeah, that's that's really the name of the game is is establishing new routines for myself mm -hmm. and for my family um, mm -hmm. to get us set up because it's a little wild, you know, when you consider that that my husband and I are fully switching roles, you know, yeah. uh, for the entirety of our marriage. I've been the primary breadwinner. And I mean, he's always brought like money in, you know, um, mm -hmm. because of his uh, you know, he's got income from his from his uh, VA disability from his injuries. But um, um and then also like his GI bill money and stuff. But, um, but he always worked, he was always a stay at home dad because that was, that was the structure that was going to work best for our family with mm -hmm. being in the military and moving around and, and all that kind of stuff. And he did a great job at it. And so now I'm having to learn that and he's, you know, going to work and learning a new job. Um, so it's just going to be a lot of learning <laughs> in my household. Yes. All the grace. Yeah. Remember to cut yourself some slack and give yourself grace because it is a huge shift because I've, yeah. I've done that shift and it is, whew, give yourself some time to, you know, get those routines going and relax. Yeah. It's going to be great. Yeah. Now. I'm hope I'm thank you. Thank you for those very wise words. I will, I may need to like text you and be like, Melissa, I need to hear it again. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> there were, there were a lot of meltdowns when I transitioned from the military to like, full-time stay at home and mom and yeah, all the things. Yeah. And it was, ooh, it's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody that says yeah. stay at home parent is not work. 
has never been a stay at home parent. Yeah, they can go fuck themselves. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're yes. six minutes in. We can say it. It's like, I'm sorry. Excellent. Yeah, we're good. Yes. Are we six minutes in or are we eight minutes in? You know, we're not going to know this whole time, which is why we don't do time. So, yeah. <laughs> Directions unclear. Um, so before we jump into the show, Melissa, anything you want to say as we get back? Get back I to am our people? so, so happy that we're good to do this again, because this is I so know. much fun just to talk with you ladies and just get to, you know, be a little crazy and shenanigans and a, a lot feral. So yeah, yeah, yeah. we feral. needed the hiatus. We needed it, but I also need you too. So I'm very happy that we're doing this again. <laughs> I mean, to be clear, we've talked. We just have not yes. recorded it for the. Internet. I was gonna say we talk like every three hours. <laughs> like, um, so we're all we're all codependent at this point. Okay. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> we're so uh, Jeremy we're absolutely like, said that. To me I'm earlier. about to get your names yeah. tattooed on my arms, guys. I have, I have more space. Yeah. He, we were talking about the show, and I was like, "Man, I'm okay if if they don't want to do it because I could go to bed." But like, it'd be really good to talk to them. And Jeremy's like, "You guys are all just very codependent." And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I I told my husband, "I'm like and? for my 40th birthday, I want to go have a girls' weekend with my feral ladies." And he's yeah. like, "Okay." And I'm like, "Wait, really?" He's like, "It didn't sound like you were giving me a choice, honey." I'm like, "Well, I really wasn't." So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for recognizing Thank that. You. <laughs> Thank you. Happy birthday to me. Thank you. I mean, yes. let's, let's, let's be clear. We've already decided that, you know, I mean, heaven forbid that our husbands go before us. We're going to be the golden girls. We are golden yes. girls in this shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, so. I've already bought a captain. Captain? Captain? <laughs> Yeah. A tent, a blousey tent that is lovely and colorful. I was gonna say, I may, I may have picked up a moo in Hawaii last week. Okay. <laughs> I'm call whatever you want. It's comfy and I'm ready. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. I love my husband. Um, <laughs> I haven't bought anyway. a shovel, to be clear. No. There are no shovels. Dance no shovels. Yeah. My yeah. tomatoes are going in a bucket. It's nowhere you can bury anybody. It's fine. Uh, okay. I'm not a big so, don't, don't whisper to me. He did so much. <laughs> Jeremy. I don't have my microphone. Oh, it's so I can't be like. <laughs> I'm just picturing like what comments he's going to put on the screen for this. Oh, no. Um, I, can't wait. I can't wait to see the post production. I love it. Um, so the reason we are making this happen while Casey is in the midst of moving and Melissa is wrangling two small humans, there's a box. I don't know if you saw, but there's yeah. a moving box, literally. Like it's evidence. Proof. She's in the mix. Moving. Uh, <laughs> moving? Background. Moving? Background. Um, and I'm moving next week, but my house is on wheels, so that happens. Um, it's fine. But it's the, still a uh, thing. It's still, like, yeah, it's work. It's and still a hassle. Not quite as much. That's going to come into play. So put a pin in that. Yeah, we'll come back. Yeah. Um, but so Casey and I were talking earlier this week, I don't know, um, about writing advice because I was talking to another writer friend of ours. Um, and she's like, you know, people always say this and people always say that. And I was like, cool, 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 cool. And writing advice is as good as it is for you. Like it mm -hmm. it can be amazing writing advice, but it might not be great for you. And, and you know, here, here are ways that can go wrong. Casey's like, here are all the ways it can go wrong. Like, I don't know, for instance, if you're moving cross continent and then cross country and then again some more for fun, <laughs> so, so then we're like, oh, we should do fair ladies and we should talk yeah. about this and talk about this for sure. absolutely yeah. and whatever else comes to mind because again, Carol, yeah, we don't play by the rules. We yeah. we don't recognize them. Yeah. Not even our own rules. <laughs> it's true, yeah, we do. We do. So I know. I'm, like, I'm just like, let me just hold the shirt out to you because. It's fine. Guys, Sorry, guys. My boobs are crooked. So here's, here's what you should know. Earlier, I was sitting on the couch. I showered for you all. You're welcome, um, internet people. You can't smell me, but my hair is clean. Um, you look beautiful. I'm very thank pretty. you. But I was sitting on the couch with my hair fully wrapped in a towel, um, and I'm wearing pajama pants. But I was like, "Why? I can just go to bed after this show, right?" No. Then I was like, "Wait, but why am I still wearing a bra?" Oh, because I have a podcast. So, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> That's how I know what my evening plans are bringing. Oh, am I wearing a bra? I must be doing something on camera. I don't know. <laughs> There's a reason. Why is it? Why can't I take this why, off yet? <laughs> why, do I, why am I still wearing this at nighttime? The sun is down. There should be no bras. Um, but, freedom. You know. Freedom. <laughs> <laughs> 
slightly related to writing advice. I, I don't know. Anyway, yeah. Casey, this was this was your brilliant idea. Do you want to introduce sure. it slightly better than I did? Yeah. Great. So, uh, okay. So let's talk about Bichok. Okay. Um, I don't know. If, that's how I like to pronounce it. It might be Bichok. It's B I C H O K. Right. It's button chair, hands on keyboard, which is in fact excellent advice because unless you're writing longhand. Uh, or dictating, that's the only way that you're going to get words is putting yeah, the, the button e in the chair and the, the elves hands on don't write it for you. Yeah, the elves don't. Well, I mean, we could talk about AI in a different show, but, yeah. but yeah, the no. elves don't write it for you. Bad elves, no. <laughs> um, but uh, so, but here's the problem with that, right? Like, like anything else, there's there's context, okay? If you are sitting your butt in a chair and putting your hands on a keyboard, and you're just chained there and not, no words are flowing. You don't feel that creative spark. You've got to pee. You're hungry. You've got a headache. People are screaming in the background, like small children, no, small children. Right. You know, dogs like trying to crawl up on you because they're codependent as hell. Yeah. Marie said I might've targeted that. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Probably not about me. It's fine. Um, you know, I mean, there, there, there are a million things that button chair hands on keyboard kind of doesn't take into account right yeah. so so the the key is and this is kind of what we talked about when we sort of had the idea for this for this episode was good advice but when is it not good advice mm -hmm. and the thing that i would like to highlight first as a a time when good advice is not good advice for you is when your needs are not met okay mm -hmm. if you're hungry if you've got a pee, uh, if your messenger keeps dinging because you forgot to close the tab out before you start the podcast, um, if you know if your if your kids are screaming at you, if you have uh, you know a flood happening in your bathroom, I don't know. But that all of those two days ago, take care of that. Yeah. Wow. all of those are needs, right? And mm -hmm. and if the if your needs are not met, if you are tired, if you need rest, you're not going to get words. And if you get words, they're not going to be the best words that they can be right yeah. um mm -hmm. so meet your needs first first and foremost if you're and and sometimes i i feel like we don't know that our needs aren't met until we try to to do mm -hmm. something like button chair hands on keyboard and like, i know like for me i'll sit down and i'll be like okay all right here i am and i'll read the i'll read the scene beforehand and for whatever reason i can't get into it mm -hmm. if i can't get into it it usually means that there's something else blocking me there's something going on like mm -hmm. i'm hungry or i'm exhausted um or i need I, you know i feel gross mm -hmm. and i need to take a shower um anything like that that can fall into the category of like responsible self-care yeah if you need to do that go do that mm -hmm. thing first and then come back put your butt in the chair and your hands on the keyboard and see how it goes mm -hmm. the other I thing i definitely okay. go ahead as you say, I think I recommended for that too. Um, and I stole this from Casey a long time ago in terms of working out. It was like, okay, yeah, you don't want to work out. Fine. That happens all the time. Do it for 10 minutes. And then if at the end of the 10 minutes, you're like, this fucking sucks, then go. You tried. Yeah. But give usually, yourself permission to yeah, stop. Bail. But yeah. mm -hmm. usually you get there for 10 minutes. You're like, fine, I can do 10 more minutes. Now you've done 20. You might as well do the half hour or 45 minutes, right? Like you're tricking your brain. Yeah. Um, and so the thing I said to this writer friend of ours was similar. I was like, do not sit in front of a screen for eight hours without writing words. Set yourself a timer. And if it, whatever that feels good to you, like maybe it's 10 minutes, maybe it's 20 minutes, maybe it's 45. Like for me, it'd probably be 45. And if at the end of 45 minutes, all you have is like all work and no play, make Jack a dull boy, bail. Like, because the next time you go to sit down, you're going to go into it going, I fucking hate this. Like what Dreading the hell? it, yeah. And no we do this we do this because yes we want to make money but we do this for fun or because we love it or because telling the story is really fun or because the characters won't shut the f up in our brains or because I'll a be friend awesome. of ours is is constantly messaging saying where is my novel about these people please hello i would like to read that where's the rest of Light? and where is my griffin novel <laughs> and where <clears throat> where are those things <laughs> That you know, when people, get, <clears throat> when people get to get a glimpse at things and they want more. Um, so that's what we write, right? <laughs> but we don't write to beat our head against the wall and like have the shining hotel adopt us. Right. 
That could be cool. No, no, no. I think my biggest issue with that lately is that, you know, I get to telework and telework is amazing and I'm not complaining. It's wonderful. But I am sitting at my little nook. I don't have a desk. I have a nook. And I have my front laptop and I have my work laptop and it's right there. So I have to yeah. sit there because yeah. I'm working, but it's so tempting. Like I get, I get breaks and I'm like, Ooh, I can open the fun laptop and I can write, but my brain might not be there. I might be stuck on whatever fire is currently happening at work. Mm -hmm. And then I just wasted, I wasted time. So mm -hmm. lately I've been trying to just keep the fun laptop closed until like, I'm actually in the right, like mind space to, to do what I need to do, whatever it actually happens to be. Mm -hmm. um, exercise has been helping with that. I'm like, nope, I can't do it. I cannot even touch the laptop until I do like my push ups and plank hell exercises or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> the torture. I have to torture myself first just to get the, you know, get the blood pumping and, and wake up a little bit. So and you're so writing is delayed gratification. I like Yeah, it. I like exactly. It I was just going to say, that's something that's really, that's interesting about that to me, Melissa, is the fact that, because I know so many writers who are like, okay, I can't do anything until I get my words for the day. Mm -hmm. And that's a tactic. And if that works for you, great. I'm super happy for you. One of the reasons it doesn't work for me sometimes is because then writing becomes the chore. Yes. And it's like, oh, I want to do this thing, but I got to get these fucking words first, you know, and mm -hmm. and that steals the joy from the creative process. And that's mm -hmm. one of those other like really insidious things. So yet another example of, you know, hey, make writing your priority you know, make sure that you get your words done every day before you do something else mm -hmm. could be good advice. But it could also backfire on you and be, you know, and and steal that joy. And with the joy comes the creative spark. And that's, mm -hmm. you know, that's what makes our stories unique and interesting and and you know special is is yeah. whatever that piece of us that is our joy that we put into it. Um, but what I like about what you've done is you've kind of flipped that script. And so writing is your reward yeah. for doing yes. something else that you have to like gear yourself up to do. And I find that, I find that really interesting. Um, that is super smart. I got it. I got it from Marisa who got yeah. it at Superstar. Yeah. I was going to say, so until you said it though, I forgot, sorry, James Artemis Owen and your brilliance. So Seriously. I had, yes. So I had a conversation with James Artemis Owen um, at Superstars last year and he in like 15 minutes flipped my entire brain and you know because my brain is what my brain is um i have to relearn that lesson we'll, we'll come back to that um sometimes you just have to change what is working that's not working and you can go back to it but so what james artemis owen said this brilliant man was i was using different things as my rewards for hitting my word goal but every day the word goal was getting harder and harder to hit and one of my friends said well what are you like what's your reward I was like, oh, I'm going to read this comic book that I've been waiting for forever and I own it and I'm so excited and I can't wait. And she was like, read the, read the comic book. And he's like, no, 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 that's my reward. She's like, read it. And so he did. And it was this book that he had been wanting to read forever and it gave him all of this energy and all of this excitement. And he was like, and then guess what I did? I rode that excitement, right, blasted my word count to pieces. He's like, yeah. do the thing that gives you energy so that when you're writing you're already in that space and then you remind your brain i do this because i love it not because i have to and it it made a difference like i finished a draft of a book like it it made a huge difference um but i and like so now it's two things it's like do the thing that gives you energy or like builds your delayed gratification um but i also have rewards so there are some books, like a certain pirate book um, is my reward for finishing this next short story that I have to do. It's just on my Kindle mocking me. Um, but because I know it is, it's like keeping me motivated to get towards it. But every day I'm like, oh, I'm going to go for a walk first. I'm going to go yeah. outside. I'm going to see birds and really large spiders because of where we are. Um, and then like, I come, they're so big. It's I spider season here. It's <sighs> That's a different feral. This is not my fun feral. Um, but it is like, get the energy, take that with you. Mm -hmm. Your readers are going to be able to enjoy that too. Like, because it's going to be a, a much more exciting. Yeah. Oh, I, you can, you can tell when the author is enjoying what they're doing versus like when it feels like pulling teeth. Yeah. I've, I've reread stuff during, you know, the editing process. I'm like, oh yeah, I remember when I was writing this, it sucked. I and hated I it. Yeah. yeah. I can tell. Yeah. Gotta fix yeah. 
Yeah, the grind. The grind comes through. It does for sure. Yeah. You know, um, and sometimes I don't know. I feel like sometimes it's like, okay, yeah, I know this is grindy. I just got to get through it so I can get to the, you know, the fun parts, and then I'll go yeah. back and fix it in post. And that's fine. That's what a thing for. Yeah, yeah. That's a that's mm -hmm. a valid strategy too. Um, but it's it's much the the drafting process, the writing process, even the editing process. I would mm -hmm. argue is more fun if it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if you're having yes. fun. I don't yeah. know. If you're looking um, forward to what you're doing, like yeah, you're right. If you're, about it, like, yes. if you're not if you're taking enjoyment from the from the mm -hmm. action rather mm -hmm. than um than dreading it. And mm -hmm. um and if it's more fun, you're gonna do better. Like you're mm -hmm. you know, you're gonna your skills are gonna be better. So mm -hmm. um so I think that you know that's kind of the bottom line too. Um I love that you brought up exercise as well, Risa, because that's something, so that's an area where I have lately not been, I have not, mm. I've been totally neglecting myself with regard to exercise just because I've had, you know, a, some stuff, All the things. work, mm -hmm. just work schedules things going and on. moving yeah. and going on vacations and which admittedly, you know, I'm not arguing, I'm not complaining about any of that, but it's just, it's been very difficult for me to have a consistent workout routine, right? Yeah which is one of the things I'm looking forward to about mm -hmm. my new job as a, you know, housewife and, and full-time mom and homeschool mom um, is like, like we were talking about the ability to set routines mm -hmm. to include a workout routine, because I have found for myself mm -hmm. that if I, again, if I meet my needs, if I'm taking care of my physical body, my emotional mm -hmm. health, my spiritual health, my social health, all of those things. If I'm doing those things, then whatever I'm putting out in the world, whether it be, you know, flying a helicopter or homeschooling my kid or writing a book, it's going to be better quality because I'm in better shape, right? You know, I'm, I'm a, I, at the risk of sounding like what I am, you know, the human weapon system needs maintenance, just like every other weapon system in the history of. <laughs> so. Sounding like what I am. You're welcome. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so, so, so again, you know, meet your needs, including exercise. And if you don't like working out, cool. Yeah. Go for a walk. You've been walking lately. How's that been affecting your output, Risa? Um, it's sadly, I was very upset about this one day. I had just been in like kind of a little funk for a, a while. Um, and then I was going for walks every day because Dragon Con was coming and you average five to eight miles a day <laughs> Dragon yeah. Con. And I was like, I'm going to die if I don't start <laughs> doing things. So <laughs> I started walking every morning um, and some afternoons because humidity is a thing. Um, and like one day, four, like three, four weeks in, I was just, just, just amazing mood, like the kind of good mood I hadn't been in in probably pre-2020. Um, just like, it was amazing. Like it was just yeah. such a good mood. And I, I was like, why am I in, like, it was a good day, but why am I in such a, it's the exercise, isn't it? And it <laughs> yeah. was, and I was so mad. <laughs> <laughs> Damn you people who've been telling me this all along. <laughs> you're wrong. You're wrong. And it's not like I didn't know, right? Like I have a black belt. I have worked out hard for long periods of time and I yeah. always feel better afterwards, even when I get literally punched in the face. Um, and it only happened twice. It's fine. But like, I genuinely felt better then. So it's not like I didn't know, but sometimes I have to relearn lessons like a yeah. lot. Same. Mm. Cause this will not be the last time <laughs> I make this discovery either, to be clear. No. <laughs> And it's like, I don't want to do, I have, I, me personally today, I've only done one round of pushups. When we're done, I'm going to have to do the second round and yeah. I don't want to, but I'm going to, <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to do it. It's happening. Cause then, yeah. then I'll reward myself with chocolate because I mean, I worked out. That's right. So now I can have dessert. That's yeah. how that works. Yeah. That's accurate. Yeah. It yeah, does. for sure. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'll start doing something. Maybe I'll start doing something like that, Melissa, where I just do like a couple sets of push-ups during the day. We'll see. It's not, it's honestly not much. It takes me all of like three minutes. So yeah. even though I whine about it, I'm like, really, this took like three minutes or less to do a set of push-ups, some mountain climbers and some planks. It sucks, yeah. but it's done. It's yeah. just no, done. Like, yeah. but yes. And then I feel, yeah. oh, yeah, they suck. The other thing I love is yoga or stretching. Do you even just stretching? Because yeah. as I get older, like, 
the well, maintaining right. that flexibility. I'm seeing such a correlation between maintaining flexibility and being able to do the stuff I want to do without pain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So yeah. The morning walks we've been doing. Um, so I, I gave myself a couple weeks for them to just be walks. Um, it's pretty hilly here. So that was good enough. And then I started yeah. doing like each dog park we went to, I would, cause we're in a dog campground. So we have seven dog parks. So each nice. one we went to, I would do like a set of squats or some effing lunges. I hate lunges so much. Um, or like stretches, like, or just various things. Yeah. Um, and it really, it really made a difference, <laughs> but it didn't take long. And it was part of the walk and you're outside and the weather's beautiful and there's birds and blah, 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 it's so nice. Yeah. It's like, damn it, this helps. <laughs> I hate that I like it after. I don't like doing it, to be clear, because I'm just sweaty yeah. and gross and mad. But after, so nice. I kind of equate it to painting the house. I never want to. But when it's done, I'm like, oh, my God, it looks great. <laughs> yeah. I'm never doing it again. Yeah. Until the next time I have to do it. Yeah, yeah. So bottom line is move your body because that too is a, is a need, a physiological need. Even if yeah. you don't, if the word workout has baggage for you, fine, ignore yeah. that. Move your body, you know, yeah. walk around your house, yeah. get up. Or, or if you have chronic pain or other things, like do what is in your power to do, yes. do not hurt yourself, but take right. care of those needs, whatever they are. Yeah. Rest, put your leg up, do the things you need to do. Right. Use your Stretch assistive devices. Your chair. Yeah. yeah. Get away from the laptop. Take care of our house. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if you find yourself stuck, right? Like if you're sitting there and you're just stuck, yeah. sitting there and being stuck isn't going to unstick you. Does it make you feel better? Mm -mm. No, no. no. Um, what are some of your favorite ways of, of kind of, I always think of it as like short circuiting the brain, right? Like if the brain is, if my brain is in this, like this scene sucks, I don't know what to do next. I don't know what to do next. I don't know mm -hmm. what to do next. It's like, mm -hmm. it's, it's on an endless loop mm -hmm. of that right yep. um and i it's almost like i have to short circuit it with something else mm -hmm. in order to mm -hmm. like get it out of that loop so that yeah. i can come back and be creative again yeah um <laughs> exercise getting up and moving is one of my favorite ways to do that yeah. what else like, what else do you guys got my my top three are shower oh good yes shower yeah. when i can't when I can't write things down, suddenly my brain's like, here are 85 ways to fix this plot hole. I'm like, cool. And usually I can keep at least three of them. So <laughs> Marisa's in the shower with her, her shampoo. Like my right hair, now. like writing in hair. Yeah, it's fine. The grease pad um, on the tile. Grease pad yeah. on the tile. <laughs> <laughs> it's dry race. It's fine. Wait, wait. I mean, maybe yeah. I should do something. Like, Jeremy! Jeremy, write this down! I know, right? Um, <laughs> I'm thinking about it. So, but shower is good. Uh, going for a drive, also very good mm, yes. for me. Um, and then exercise, yes, but I, I'm so reluctant with that still. Um, it's nature. So go out to the woods or the beach, mm -hmm. wherever the RV happens to be in is easier. Um, but just escaping for a little while where I can't write anything down. Maybe I can like jot it on my phone. Yeah. Um, suddenly my brain's like, oh, yeah, no, I know what to do. Yeah. <laughs> Or here's a brand new idea that you should go home and write and worry about that other one later. Yeah. Well, yeah. Those are all, those are all great things. I do those too. Right. Um, yeah. I, another technique sometimes that works for me because I'm, we're all busy, right? We all have like a list of projects that we're either working on simultaneously or that we're going to be, you know, getting to next. So sometimes if I get stuck on what I'm currently doing or I mm. find myself eyeballing the ceilings going, I could, I could decob web. I could do that. <laughs> I could dust cleaning. I don't want to do that. I am like mm -hmm. procrastinating. So I'm like, maybe, maybe I'll start like just doing notes or, you know, mm -hmm. plotting out something that I'm going to work on next yeah. because yeah. it's, it's exciting and it's fun and it gets my brain working again. Yeah. It gives me a break from whatever I'm stuck. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. I'm with you outside. Outside helps a lot. Even if it's just stepping out on like my patio or front step or whatever, mm -hmm and taking a big deep breath of air that's not coming through an HVAC system. Um, mm -hmm. Sure, yeah. That, that can help a lot, you know? Mm -hmm. But a lot of times too, what I, what I also find is that I do that when I'm tired. Mm. And so if I find myself there and it feels like, it feels like my brain is frayed around the edges. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I need rest. Mm -hmm. As much as I hate it, 
I need a lot of rest. You guys, it's ridiculous how much freaking sleep I need. Mm -hmm. I'm, okay. I'm one of those people, you know how they say, you know, seven is an average, right? Seven hours a night is an average. Mm -hmm. Some people, my husband can be perfectly fine on like four and a half hours of sleep a night. I need like nine, you guys. And it sucks oh. because it's so much time. I need, I can't be doing other things. Yeah. So, and that yeah. list doesn't get smaller while you're asleep, which is some bullshit. Yeah. What's that? What happens? That your list does not get smaller while you're no. asleep. Which is <laughs> yeah. It doesn't. Yeah. Nothing, yeah. Nothing, nothing happens while we're sleeping. It's, it's, it's just like, yeah. why? But, we have why but if I don't get, you know, like, and I mean, yeah. I can surge, right? I, I can for sure surge. I can make it work on, on seven hours or six hours or five mm -hmm. hours or, you know, today I'm working with four, right. four hours. Yeah. yeah. But for um, only so long. Yeah. That's it. The surge so ops are not yeah. sustainable by definition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My favorite, favorite current favorite piece of internet advice that I stole like from like a one, Tumblr post. <laughs> yeah, I do. I like this one. This is good yeah. internet advice. If you did your best all the time, it wouldn't be your best. Ooh, it would be your I average. I saw that one. Mm -hmm. I saw that one. That's you can't one. do your best all the time. You do your average and your average is pretty damn good. Do your fucking average. And sometimes you can surge and do your best. Mm -hmm. But if you're doing your best all the time, it's not, it's not, it's not your best. It's literally not right. your best. Right. And here's the other thing too. Like if you want to increase your best, you can. Yep. You absolutely can. Surging well, your is not average. If you want to. Yeah. You want sorry. If you, if you want yeah. to, well, if you want to increase your best, you have to increase your average. Yes. Right. Both. Yes. And yes. if you want to increase your average, you can do that, but you can't do it by surging, by forcing yourself to surge because all that is, is trying to sustain a surge leads to burnout. No good. Hi. Yeah. So. Nope. So what, what the key is, if you want to improve your performance, you have to do it incrementally, right? Yeah, slow and steady. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's not to say that it has to, it has to always be small increments. I mean, I think that, you know, given your, you can level up, yeah. you can level up. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, for example, my hope is that in my life, mm -hmm. my production will actually increase mm -hmm. to a noticeable degree because I now have one less commitment on my time. I'm no longer, you know, working full time outside the home. So um, my hope is that, again, utilizing these routines and structures, I'm going to have dedicated, protected mommy work time. Mm -hmm. And I know all you work at home moms are laughing your asses off at me right now. I understand. I do. But that's the goal, right? It's an ideal. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great yeah. goal. Yeah. Very goals. And, you know, if, if we get there three, you know, three, three days out of the week and I get, you know, some solid words down, those are words that I wasn't getting before. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, 100%. um, so I guess that, that piece of, of advice is sure. Structure your, structure your work day, treat it like a job, mm -hmm. but do that in a way that makes sense for your life. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I would also recommend, um, I want to go back to the incremental growth and the like grow and structure piece. But yeah. another thing when you're stuck or to give you energy or just to like help you build is surround yourself with people who support that. Yes. Um, so if you can, I strongly recommend not just like a super supportive spouse, which is amazing or bestie, amazing. Um, but get you some writer buds. <laughs> if you can and you can go to writer conferences, go to conventions, Find people online. Um, all of mine are currently online buds. Um, no one's in my RV with me except, you know, Jeremy, who's wonderful. But he's not a writer bud, right? So like right. supportive spouse. I really want to stop saying writer bud because it sounds terrible. But like my writer besties too. It sounds like a certain right here. It does. Certain it's not what I'm trying to do right here. It's not that kind of party. But like <laughs> but people who, thing, by the way. It's not fun. <laughs> who are it's fine. You're you're not you're not flying anymore, so you can do whatever you want to do. That. No longer fine. You're the boss. I no longer have to pass an FAA. That's right. That's right. Um, surprise. Uh, anyway, <laughs> should go get that seltzer out of the fridge. Um, <laughs> but for real, for real, for real, for real, um, find you some writing friends who are whether they're at the same point of their career as you or not doesn't 
doesn't matter at all. Like if they're close, awesome. If they're ahead, amazing. If they're behind, fantastic. Like, but people who are supportive and truly believe the rising tide lifts all boats, like this is not a competition yes. because mm -hmm. one, the level of energy I get after a call with one of these two yahoos, um, like I can, I, yeah. So she, she's also my, these are my yahoos. I am also my yahoo. It turns out, um, but like that yes, energy, are. that energy is no joke. And that ability to help problem solve, even if I'm just saying something out loud and I solve it myself because of the like energy on the call, mm -hmm. um, that is that is invaluable. Like, and the things I have put in books in brackets, like cool shit will go here. Casey's experiences firsthand in books we've written together. Melissa has <laughs> experiences firsthand. And I'm like, thank you for alpha reading my book. By alpha read my book, I mean, here are some words strung together with brackets <laughs> where other words will go. <laughs> also, and guess where I got that technique from? What you go in those brackets? <laughs> I'm all ears. Yeah. I mean, if anything occurs to you of like, cool shit goes here, what that cool shit is, you let me know. And <laughs> I'll work on it. I am receptive. <laughs> I have ears and I would like them to hear your words. Um, yeah, but, but finding people who can like meet your energy um, yeah. that you can, you can talk to about these things when you get really stuck, you might solve the problem yourself. They might help you solve the problem. It's probably going to be a mix. Um, but holy buckets talk about helping you level up. Yeah. It's amazing. One of my, one of my favorite like memes that was created by one of my friends was uh, boy Casey, Casey Morse. He's also a writer, friend of all three of us is the one that he has. It's from, it's like a, a the same pose as in oceans, it's oceans 11 or whatever, where it's, <laughs> it's, <Ocean's 11>. where, <laughs> <laughs> it's where it's George Clooney and Brad Pitt and Brad Pitt's like laying on the thing. He's not saying anything. And, and George Clooney's like, do we need another guy? I think we need a guy. I'm gonna get another guy. There's Casey made this amazing meme, and if we can get it to Jeremy and he can flash up on the screen, so great, yeah. I've got it. Yeah, um, but oh it's. God. I don't know if I don't know if that's a thing he could do, but whatever. Um, but yeah. it's <laughs> Melissa's it's right working on the, on the bar. I think it's in Casey's house, actually. The, it was a it was a fantasy. It was oh the, yeah okay, and bar she's playing the bar, and he's like. Do I need to do another scene? Should I do another scene? Or should I I'm rewrite the scene? I'm gonna rewrite the scene. <laughs> so because because <laughs> that, that is us. Yeah. But that is, that is 100% is. the dynamic. You know, like sometimes we know as writers, we know what the story needs. Mm -hmm. We just don't know that we know it yet. But in talking it through with our friends, it, it that kind of makes it percolate to the surface mm -hmm. you know it does it really helps to talk things out because i've done that with you i've done that with marisa um i used to try and like help casey boy casey and mm -hmm. then i realized that i don't even I need, need to, to talk half the mm -hmm. time i don't even need to respond to his messages he'll just say okay got it thanks brad and i'll be like catching up oh cool i helped him sweet <laughs> yeah <laughs> Did that so that worked and I love that he like, calls you Brad too. That's yeah, all he's that's exactly right. he's like, I need Brad. I'm like, all right, I'm here. Brad's and then sometimes here. Sometimes he's like, no, no, no. I actually, I, I lied. I don't need Brad. I need Melissa. I need you to actually to like tell me what you to do. Actually, here. interject here, please. What help. goes in these brackets? <laughs> I'm like, the, the one time he really needed my help, I'm like, crap. I I really was not prepared. For I wasn't this. listening. Like, <laughs> Wait, I wasn't listening. Let me start over. <laughs> like, I'm going to need you to say all that again. Thank you. Yeah, let's do it for real. It was just kind of going. Normally, <laughs> <laughs> you don't need me. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, I had to assume the position. I don't know. <laughs> I was just here. <laughs> See, and that. Go ahead. No, go ahead, Melissa. It it is it is amazing. Like when we can just talk to each other and. At the, at the opposite end is when we can bounce ideas, right? Like yeah. me and Nick Steverson are really good at that, about just bouncing ideas off each other, whether it's something that we're co-writing together or I'm stuck on Salvage Bunny or he's stuck on, you know, his 4 h project and we'll just start bouncing ideas. And it's amazing being able to do that with your author friends because it might not be the idea you had in your brain at all and it might not be what you use, but it'll make mm -hmm. it your brain moving in a different direction than you would have gotten uh, to on your own. Yeah. So it's having those author friends, your writer buds that are, you know. I'm sorry I did that. I don't know. Enthusiastic and supportive and not like, ugh, this is hard. I don't want to do this. Yeah. Like, I, I, don't, I don't want the bad attitude. I want like the happy, happy, joy, joy. Like let's let's get this like pumped up and happy. 
I love it. Right. Also, also, you know, another one that uh, another key piece that, that Marisa mentioned that I think we should kind of underscore here is those that believe in the rising tide theory of, yes. of the universe, because um, you what you don't want is you don't want someone who's going to tear you down because they're going to feel like it makes them feel better. That's toxic. Yeah. And fuck that. That's shit. terrible. Yeah. Mm -mm. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. For sure. And it's unnecessary. We none of us. Even our amazingly talented, ridiculously productive friend, Katie Cross, cannot write enough books to keep every reader happy forever. Right. Um, she writes a fuck ton of books, and they're amazing, and they keep a lot of readers very happy. Right. Um, and those readers read other things. So, yes. like, we yes. can't, we can't, none of us can. Katie Cross only readers. produces one novel a month. If you oh. know, most, most rabid readers... Only yeah. right, only yeah, only yeah. one. She's amazing. She's awesome. We love her. But, but my point is, most rabid read rabbit not rabbit readers rabid <laughs> readers will read a book in about a day. Right? Yeah. That yeah. still leaves twenty nine at least other days, it's, unless we're yeah. talking February. Uh, <laughs> right? For them to read our books. Right? It's so yeah. yeah, there's the only the only real competition I think is with yourself right mm -hmm. we're always trying to to level up and do better and i think that that's mm -hmm. healthy um mm -hmm. but i it makes no sense for me to try and compete with with marisa or with melissa or with anyone because yeah. my stories are apples and melissa mm -hmm. Mar marisa's stories <laughs> and Mar melissa's stories are bananas and katie crosses are fucking coconuts <laughs> and you know all this shit's different all delicious Marisa's is tuna fish. It's fine. <laughs> and food. Hey, guys, sometimes I, I, you really want to tuna fish sandwich, okay? Yeah. But you, like, you get my tortured metaphor, right? I do. Only, yeah. only you can do what you can do. Yeah. And the world needs what you can do. So yeah. do that. Yeah. But do it in a way that is sustainable, which is not forcing yourself to follow what may be very good and very inten well-intentioned advice, but if it doesn't work for you, it's not working for you. Yeah. So, And it might work for you for some time mm -hmm. and then it stops. And that is not a failure of nope. you. Nope. That is your brain doing any, any kind of things. Your brain, like it's like resistance training. You have built up that muscle and now your brain's like, nope, that doesn't work anymore. <laughs> or, or, or it's a change or, in your circumstance. Yep. Yeah. Yep, you're moving or other things are happening or it worked for one kind of story, but it's not working for mm -hmm. this story that you're on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, or you you did level up in that last thing by writing, I don't know, 70,000 words in two months or 80,000 words in two months, maybe. But then you didn't write again for eight weeks because your brain was tired. Right. Um, but then you could come back and write that again, but not all the time. Um, or because your brain is mine and uh, needs the next shiny object in order to be tricked again. So yeah. <laughs> it's okay to change the advice that works. Like I have been the person who wakes up and says, okay, I'm going to write 500 words before I can even have coffee. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm going to do. That. And that it worked for me for like six weeks. It worked really well because then it was like any other words you write today are, are just their lanyap. Yeah, they're total yeah. extra congratulations. Like you've done the hard part. You could write a mm -hmm. hundred words a couple more times today and you're gonna be good. Um, and that that made my brain like really excited. So I was like, I can check off a thing. I can have the dopamine. I can make the happy. Like, yay. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then after that, my brain was like, this is some fucking bullshit. Do something else. And I was like, okay. And I tried to force it for too long and work became right, writing became a chore mm -hmm. and I couldn't do that anymore. And then it was like, okay, write a hundred words. <laughs> and that worked for like a week. So my brain was like, no, I figured out this game. I don't like it. Um, <laughs> so it was fine. Like that was not working for me anymore. So then it was like, do a thing, reward yourself with a writing break, do another thing, reward yourself with a writing break, um, read a chapter of a book. Like I finally got to read the Verkozigan saga. So that was pretty great. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it was like, yeah, I'm going to read two more chapters. Yeah. And then I'll write. It's going to be great. Um, but like find the thing that works for you for that project for, for that now. time for now. Yeah. And if it changes, that's okay. Don't be like, mm -hmm. Oh no, it was the perfect writing device. It wasn't, it was the perfect writing device for you for that moment. And now it isn't. Yeah. Move along. 
Yeah. Well, and it I may change, it may not. The whole, yeah. Like with, with writing advice, like, you know, there's a lot of good advice out there, mm -hmm. but there's the, the one thing that I've ever heard that was bad just applied to when people are like, this is the way. Yeah. No, no, there is no one way. Anyway. There isn't, yeah. as Marisa said, there's clearly no one way even for you. So mm -hmm. find what works for you. Take all the advice. Mm -hmm. Really listen, buddy, you know, with a grain of, or a, you know, bucket full of salt and, and figure out what works for you like that day, not even that yeah. week, because it can change <laughs> all the time. Yeah. I will say the one thing that I will stand by as being hard and fast is meet your needs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. Yeah. meet your needs. If you need to go eat, eat something. Your writing will be better. If you, if you need rest, yeah. get some rest, you know. Um, listen to your body is important. Listen, listen to your body. Yes. Yeah. Um, if, you know, if, if you're, if you're ill and you just need to recover, give yourself the time to recover. You meet your needs. And yeah. I, I think that's pretty hard and fast. Um, I, I would say the, I'm trying to think of an exception to that rule. And I, the only thing that I can come up with would be something like, you know, I don't know, a, a deadline type situation where you just got to like, and you're so close to the end, you just got to finish that, you know, the last big battle scene and you're like sitting there crossing your legs cause you got to pee, but God damn it, you got to get it up, get the words yeah. out first. Okay, yeah. fine. Whatever, don't pee yeah. yourself, but you know, make it happen. <laughs> You're gonna do. Oh, yeah, so I've fast. definitely, I've definitely <laughs> sacrificed sleep because I'm really feeling the energy and like the thing I needed yeah. was sleep. But I was on a roll and I was like, oh, hell no, I'm gonna write it. Like, but again, you're listening to your body, you're making that judgment because the next day yeah. I was hungover from lack of yeah. sleep. So yeah, yeah, and, and how much did you produce the next okay. day? None. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So if, if it's worth it to make that sacrifice because you're, you know, you're reaching some milestone or you're, mm -hmm. or you're meeting some, some mm -hmm. short-term deadline, some short-term reward. Or you're just or in goal. the groove. Yeah. yeah. And you can, and you can afford the recovery time. Fine. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great. Yeah. Um, but, but meet your needs. Yeah. And do that parent, you know, do take care of you because you're the one who has to do this. Right. Yeah. So the so. other advice that I would say, like, keep in mind, but it's not advice. It's more of a guideline um is the like is because it's part of giving yourself grace um it's one of my favorite stolen pieces of of remember this and i think it's neil gaiman but he might have also stolen it from somewhere i don't know um the point of the first draft is not to be perfect the point of the first draft is to exist so if you are sitting there obsessing over every single word or this part is a grind and you know it's not fun slap down some brackets, mm. give yourself a comment that you're going to kick yourself for later, but put in a comment that's like, fix this later. This sucks. Okay. Bye. I love you. <laughs> that's okay. It just has to be there. It's going to be easier to edit it than to make it work in that moment. So yeah. mm -hmm. I think that is a good thing to always, that's really giving yourself grace, which is a key piece of meeting your needs. Um, yeah. But just remember like, the first draft, maybe your first draft is perfect. Good for you. I don't hate you at all. Um, but the point of the first draft, <laughs> the purpose of it is not to be perfect. The purpose of it is to exist so you can make it better. Yeah. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Mm -hmm. And I'm one of those who does what they, whatever, like many, many people say you shouldn't do and edit as I go. Sometimes um, I do that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, because it, it bugs me if it's not right. You know, like I feel yeah. I, if for me in my process and my brain, as I'm going along, if mm -hmm. something isn't, isn't correct or isn't, mm -hmm. doesn't flow properly, or it's not the right word or whatever, mm -hmm. it will, it acts like a roadblock. And mm -hmm. I, Real you know, it, it holds up the energy of, mm -hmm. con of continuing the creation, the creative yeah. process. Yeah. Um, so I am like, I type and I backspace and 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 then I hit return and do a new paragraph and it's on and on and on and on and on and on. And I also oftentimes when I'm sitting down to do a writing session, I'll do what um, Mona Lisa Foster calls cycling, where she'll read what she wrote the last time yep. and rolling edit edits. it. Yeah. Yeah. Rolling edits. Yeah. And 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 yeah. get back into it um, yeah. that way. So yeah. she'll read what she did, she'll edit it, and then she'll that'll put her back in the headspace of the story and mm -hmm. keep going. So that's another great example of very particular writing advice. It works really, really well for some people, but I know some people who are like, nope, I cannot edit. I have just got to word vomit it out and get it out there because the point of a first draft is to exist. Yes. And then I go back and then I fix it. 
And that's great. Um, Nick seems to be kind of leaning that way, Melissa, you know, based on my yes. experience writing yeah, with you. His, his right. And that's great. I mean, he produces great stuff. Yeah. But it's it's interesting when you're trying to co-write with someone and they and you both have those those different processes where it's yeah. like, no, we need to fix this. He's like, no, we're, 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 we're past that. Yeah. We're <laughs> we'll come back to it at the end. So I was like, part. I can't. I, I can't. I gotta fix it. And he's like, just write it. I have like, to fix it in order for me to know what happens next. You know. So I do think there's a difference there too. But like, one, it's what works for you. Like that is yes. the the underlying yes. piece of everything. And let's come back to the co-writing in one second. Um, yeah. Because um, but we should do a whole different episode on co-writing. We, you know, yeah. So we'll, do, we'll come back to that in more than one second. We will yeah. see you in November. Um, yes. But the, or December. Who knows? Time to see an honorary nothing. feral lady, maybe as a guest. Maybe yes. I might have yeah. messaged one of them about that. Um, but so I find like if I am just stuck and I cannot move forward in the story because the word is wrong and I throw it in brackets and I, so I know I will find it again, then mm -hmm. suddenly I'm like, okay, and I can keep going. I do that with names a lot. Yeah, I do that with names a lot. Mm -hmm. But off, or like who I'm going to kill in a battle because I don't always know right away. <laughs> right. <laughs> I get later, I'm like, oh yeah, I'll come back to this. But if it's like a plot point, I can't. Like if it's mm -hmm. just like cool battle goes here, totally, that's fine. Um, but if it's like, I don't, I don't know what happens. Like I have to at least know how like they get out of it. <laughs> like yeah. I have to know something. If it's like critical to the story, the story can't go on. But if it's critical to the story, but I can finesse, like anyway, brackets free me from that like stuck place, but I do edit. Like my, my drafts tend to be fairly clean minus the brackets. Um, I do love those brackets. <sighs> I love them so much. That I think was something I stole from Casey in co-writing because I was stuck on something and she was like, put it in a fucking bracket and come back to it. It's really, yeah. yeah, oh. I love it. Oh, yeah. yeah, it is. It's very freeing. And I discovered, because I would, I would obsess over like, okay, well, which which character is, you know, like um, in, well, in the story that Melissa and I are sort of collaborating on, um, you know, it's, it's one of those braided stories, right? So what happens to the characters in her story is going to affect which characters are available and not dead in my story. Right, right. And I don't know the answers to all of that yet. So I have a lot of somebody else, you know, this person, this person, and bracket, someone else, unbracket, um, you know, close bracket, walk through the jungle, you know? <laughs> and then once I know who's alive from yeah. Melissa's story, I'll be able to go in and, and you know, and, and just replace so bracket, close, so close to being done. Yeah. Yeah. Bracket, you know, with, with their name, um, yeah. you know, or if I just can't remember who it is. Um, mm. yeah. Yeah. Is that, yeah. Because I would, I would get stuck and then I'd have to go back and read and be like, okay, where was that scene that mentioned this one random throwaway character? And, and right. it would, it would eat up my time. Yeah. Um, right. And and my energy, and then I'd find it, and I'd be totally kicked out of the story and totally kicked out of the groove. So yeah, yeah. brackets are a, a very useful um, yeah. writer tool. Except and it doesn't matter. Brackets. Like I mean, we use brackets, but like Sarah Cannon, she'll do like uh, XXX. Yeah. And blah 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 here XXX or whatever or or double X's. Um, the secret that's easy to search for. That easily yeah. search for. Yeah. yeah, a search term. Yeah, it's not going to come up with 18 other things like, oh, well, I put it with like an S around it. No, everything has an S. You're never going to find that again. It lives yeah, there. It's no. not working. <laughs> That's the answer. <laughs> it's a highlight. No, no, okay. no like, none of us, none of us said like we get it perfect. Like, yeah. if somebody can, awesome. Like, like Marisa said, I hate you. You're awesome. Great. But yeah, congrats. We're not Jeffrey. looking for perfect. We're yeah. looking for right. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's just the right word or the right feeling. Mm -hmm. I, I think I just rewrote the final battle scene in Salvage Bunny 18 times. Oh no. Because it but wasn't it feels right now. Yeah. Yeah, it feels right now. But before mm -hmm. that, I'm like, I knew it was wrong. I, mm -hmm. I slapped it together and I left it alone until I was mm -hmm. ready to edit it and not get distracted with cobwebs. But I'm like, it has to be right. It has to flow mm -hmm. and it has mm -hmm. to feel like it's got that right pacing and everything. And some of that is just experience. Some of it mm -hmm. is practice and some of it is just reading a lot of books. Mm -hmm. A lot. <laughs> nerds first. <laughs> yeah, total nerds. But I mean, it's it's not going to be perfect. Like the the more internet advice, like God grant me the confidence and like God. perseverance of a typo that survives forty six rounds of edits, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. And like twenty sets of eyeballs. Nope, I'm just going to mm -hmm. live there to publication. <laughs> yep. Yep. Definitely have had that 
that type of <laughs> mm -hmm. never, never going to be perfect, but you know what? It's going to be awesome. And it's going to yeah. be yeah. when it's right, when you feel that it's right, it's going to be awesome. Yeah. And it's you because it's going to be you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what yeah. makes it awesome. That's so, true. all right. We are wrapping up on an hour. Who knows when you'll see us again soon ish. We don't live by the rules. It's fine. We don't live by the rules. We will someday maybe get us. Allegedly, we're going to get a routine. We'll see how that goes for us. Um, and it will work for us Five, until six, it doesn't. Seven, eight, in the meantime, that's right. In the meantime, we're all clean. <laughs> Shuffle slide. Um, it's going to be great. You'll see us again. You're welcome. Um, in the meantime, what should keep it in mind? We don't know when this will come out because we're just going to give it to Jeremy and he'll do what he wants. And we're moving next week. So um, me too. Actually, yeah. I'm moving this week. I'm moving. This I'm week. not moving. You're moving very soon. Well, I'm, actually, moving. I'm moving in next week. I'm like unpacking next week. Yeah, that's happening. That's real. We could be yeah. unpacking buddies. Let's do it. I love it. I love it. We're I want to be here for emotional beds. support. <laughs> right in moving beds. Here we go. <laughs> and our emotional support bunny. Um, <laughs> You're so, welcome. <laughs> love it. Um, <laughs> assuming this will come out in October. Oh, that seems like a fair guess, right? Okay. I think. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Almost currently, friends, it is the end of September. So that's let's not put bad. it in brackets. Yes. <laughs> this will come out. It's coming out. What, what should people be on the lookout for you while they await yet another delightful hour in our company? Mm. So, uh, 13 stories edited by Marisa Wolf. She's over here on my screen. I don't know where that's she is it. in yours. Yeah. Um, but Marisa Wolf and Nick Steverson uh, comes out on October 13th. It and does. Friday, Friday the 13th. 13th. Friday yeah. the 13th. And Marisa yeah. Wolf and I have a delicious little Southern comfort of a story. Um, <laughs> it's so good. It's small town uh, romance horror. It is, it is a small town romance horror story. You are welcome. <laughs> you are so welcome. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, so, uh, so that is the next thing that I have coming out. Um, in addition to that, um, in, at the beginning of 2024, um, down these mean streets, um, which also has a story by Marisa yes, Wolf. Um, you guys might be yeah. noticing a theme about my career. It involves a lot of Marisa Wolf. I just follow her. It's <laughs> fine. I love it so much. <laughs> um, the, uh, down these main streets comes out. I think January. I think it's still on the schedule for January. It might be February now, um, of uh, of twenty twenty four. So if you like noir detective fiction type stories um, set in cities, uh, featuring you know the the setting of the city, the city as character, etc. Um, check that out. I think you'll really love it. We've got some some awesome stories by some awesome authors. Larry's back for it. Laurel K Hamilton's back for it. I'm in it. Reese is in it. Um, Casey Moore's. Uh, Casey Moore's is yeah, in it. Sophie. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, who else? Oh, did I did get? read that one. It is really good. Really good. Uh, Bob Buechner's got another story in it. It's so good. So awesome. good. So mm. Steve Diamond's got one. Yeah. He's in the uh, horror anthology too. He is. He's a horror writer. Everybody watching this who read, watches Writer Dojo needs to take a drink right now. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> so. So yeah, there you go. That's that's me. That's what's coming up for me. <clears throat> I love it. Melissa, what you want to add? So I also am in the 13 stories of horror, uh, co-wrote with Nick Steverson, my evil twin. And mm -hmm. holy crap, we also did a small town mystery horror type thing. And like mm -hmm. it, it was so funny reading reading their story and then reading mine and Nick's because I'm like, oh, they, we have like a lot of the same elements and we went like in completely completely opposite direction so Very it's different it, it was a lot of fun to write it it's it's definitely a little bit gorier than i usually go with but nick is like all about it and he, yeah. he came up with some really cool stuff so i'm excited for y'all to read that um uh Tigers with casey more. moore's oh we we like doing these braided stories together too we did one with the four horsemen anthology uh, phoenix initiative before we did that, we actually did the same thing for uh, William Allen Webb's last uh, Brigade universe. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. comes out, I think, right after 13 Stories of Horror. I think it's, it's up for pre-order. So don't ask. it's sometime in October. I'm horrible with dates, but that one will be out. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun, I think. Like, end of the world, as you know, it, last road trip. Nice. 
good times. That's awesome. Um, that sounds so fun. Yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. And and Bill Webb is so amazing to work with. He's a good dude. He's so enthusiastic about like everything that you just get that energy from him too. He's yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah. He's a great one of those writer friends. He yes. is. Yeah. He's oh my God, enthusiastic. Yeah. He's supportive. Like mm -hmm. he's, he's he's amazing. Great in life. Yeah. He's mm -hmm. really good. Um, um outside of that, add? Salvage Bunny. Yeah. Salvage yeah. Bunny. The uh, I got 20 pages left to edit, so you you might be getting that tomorrow, Marisa. <laughs> oh, fuck yes. Okay. <laughs> so it. hopefully that will be depending. It all depends on CKP's release schedule and how yeah. long it takes Space Dad, aka Kevin Steverson, to read through it. So sure. Maybe, sure. maybe early 2024. We'll see. Nice. Love it. Yeah. Um, one other anthology that uh, Casey and I have coming out. So it's just 13 stories of horror you should probably get it the apartment building on the cover has 13 floors that's the joke you got this um see if you can identify all the horror elements in the apartment um so check that out so much fun um we also have a story from uh, declan finn dj butler i mean we've got we've got some horror folks in there and then some folks who just had a lot of fun with horror because we love it um yeah. or wanted to give you romance horror you're welcome um so another another uh Anthology, Casey and I are in because we wrote a story together again. Um, it's called All Will Burn. Oh, yeah. Um, and I, think I don't that's, know when yeah, that's coming out. I think that's also October 13th. Um, really? Just for fun. Yeah, we're just going to give you all the anthologies on one day. You need okay. it for the weekend. Yeah. Um, and in that story, you guys, I'm going to tell you a secret. The story that we wrote is a world that Casey and I are developing and have been developing for a while that we're going to be writing. And this is your first look at it. Oh, I'm excited. Yeah. You are the first people we're telling. I mean, who knows when this is going to come out? So other people might know, but <laughs> we're telling you technically. First. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's, welcome. you know, what's cool about that too. I didn't, I, we haven't really talked about this, although it's sort of, I guess you and I understand it, but this is also like the origin story for the world, the way that it is going to be. <laughs> There. Your eyebrows are amazing. I'm so, I'm so excited. <laughs> Y'all should be excited too because I'm excited. Ooh, my poor abused eyebrows. Yeah. Yeah. Do we send you that story? If not, we'll send it to you, Melissa. So. Give me, give me, give me. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right of friend privileges. Yes. <laughs> Everybody else by the anthology, October 13th. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> so that's coming out. Um, so that um, one, so All Will Burn is from Rock Hunter Press. Um, mm -hmm. And it's going to be like the first of at least two, maybe three, because I guess they got a boatload so of, of yeah. submissions. Yeah. Um, so the, the theme of that is, of that anthology is what will parents do to protect uh, their children? Um, so nice. prepare for some dark stuff, maybe. Um, uh, but our story is not, it's a little dark. It's not terribly dark. It is what it is. Our story yeah. is what it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then uh, and then the 13 stories is um, being Three published Ravens. by Three Ravens Press. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. um, so lots of small press love coming yeah. up this month. Yeah, yeah. It. which is cool. Yeah. So, yeah, check those out in October and we'll be back in November. So you can you can Hold just on. wait to hear more about things that are coming out in 2024. That I will yeah! talk about. No, we need to talk about it now. Yeah. Beyond <laughs> Enemies. Get yes! Beyond Enemies. It's so good. It's available for pre-order, which is, is now. Now it is. It, it is, is available. Go pre-order it. Pre-order, pre you guys. <laughs> I am not even lying to you. This story, if you like the Dragon Riders of Pern and <sighs> the Bolo series with like intelligent tanks mm -hmm. and uh, like David Drake's stuff, if you like that stuff, any of the three of us of those. You're gonna want to read this this book. It's over here. Um, I've I've heard that if you are a fan of David Weber, that you're gonna love Marisa Wolf. No, if story. you're a fan of Marisa Wolf, you're gonna love <laughs> David Weber. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Tony said in all seriousness, if you're a fan yeah. of David Weber, you're gonna love Marisa Wolf. Yeah, no, you are. Totally it's legit. It's like, this story such a good broke story, my brain. Yeah, in like the best way. Yeah. I was broken. So go pre-order. Go pre-order. Beyond Enemies, mm -hmm. get the E-Arc, read the E-Arc, fall in love with the E-Arc, and then buy like three hardcover copies, yeah. one for you. To trade keep. paperback, trade paperback, yeah. yeah. Or three, yeah, whatever, yeah. three trade paperback copies. 
one for you to keep, at least three, right? Yeah, I mean, sure, you know, you know. <laughs> times are tough. There's inflation. One to keep, pristine on your shelf, first edition, that you probably <laughs> signed at a, signed. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, at a convention. One to loan to people. And then one to give as a gift to someone when it's your day to do something. Else. Oh, yes, yes. You see, I, I'm I'm going to also make that request for everybody to at least buy three copies because I have been promised bendy hotness for book two. So we need to make yeah. book two happen. And if you want to know what I mean by bendy hotness, you got to pre-order it and then like times 10. Okay, just do this for me, for me, because you love me, right? I need bendy hotness in my life. <laughs> Come on, y'all. I mean really <laughs> i love it i love it whom's amongst us um amazing thank you thank you thank you ladies. the whole thing um, not just the bendy hotness the whole thing is amazing right, to be clear right Great. so you may be thinking to yourself self these ladies are very biased and you're correct they are and i love them very <laughs> very much but also if you go on twitter there is a certain big deal author who is reading my book right now and he is not biased um because we have only met in passing and he is very much enjoying it so you know I, also, I heard something about he order. forgot he didn't notice the plane was taking off. Yeah. What? He was reading it and he didn't realize that the plane took off, you guys. Pretty That's awesome. how into this story he was. Mm -hmm. Also, mm -hmm. point, of order. point of order. Yeah. I would like to just to just call to the attention That's of fair. the internets. The board. That, yeah. That while I love you, I yeah. do. You yeah. are my my die. ride or die. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna be golden girls together someday. Yeah. Uh, yes. in the far future. In the far future, far, far future. No time, um, Beth. I am not known. This is true. For not saying or for saying things I don't think yes. or don't believe. Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think and believe in the core of my soul that you're a fucking superstar. And this book is yes. amazing. And legions of military science fiction <laughs> fans are going to get their first taste of you. And all you're going to hear about for the next 35 fucking years is when's the next B and Talon book coming out. Team Breezy for the win. Yeah. Where's, when's, when's the next Breezy verse book coming out? Thank so. you. I love you. We are Breezy biased. Verse. She is right. I'm calling it. Yes. I'm calling it. It's but a guess the end. Yes. Also, yes. Bias, we're also, also book nerds, colors. right? At heart. Yes. Right. Yep. And I'm blunt as hell and I don't say things I don't mean. So. That's true. That is hundred percent true. Mm -hmm. So if you were saying that to yourself, self, these are biased ladies. Yes. And also honest. So there you go. You're welcome. <laughs> and, and if you, if you need further verification, my husband witnessed me sitting in my chair for 10 <laughs> minutes while he is making dinner by himself because I was too broken to get up. This <laughs> happened. It was witnessed and there is camera footage of it. <laughs> so it's amazing. <laughs> Just buy, just buy the damn book and we'll leave you alone, I promise. <laughs> you, know, read it. you got five more months of this. You're welcome. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah. All right. Oh my gosh. I love it. I love you. I love all of you watching. Thank you for joining us and our feral virality. Yeah. Ooh. I love it. Um, you should you should come see us. Rumor has it two of the three, and hopefully three of the three of us will be at MarsCon in January. Yeah. So you should probably yeah cross your fingers that three of the three um and then come see us mars kind uh, of virginia just to be clear yeah. i think there's another one somewhere there's mark Marcon too there's right? Marcon, but i think uh anyway anyway mars, virginia, mars virginia. Kind of virginia january 2024 yeah um you should come see us we're delightful we're we're more even more somehow delightful in person you're welcome than here Although once Jeremy gets done with this video, who knows? Maybe this is just the next one. You watch this and be like, why? Why are you like this? <laughs> yeah. We love you. Yeah. Love you, mm -hmm. God husband. I cherish our friendship. Good day. Good day. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, he heard one third of it because I am not quiet and we live in a camper. So he heard my part. Now he gets to watch the whole beautiful, <laughs> amazing show. <laughs> Round of applause. Oh, see, for see the we love him. Thank goodness he exists. Um, okay, but for real, we it's one it's one hour and ten minutes or one hour and eight minutes. We don't know. You know, you know the answers. We do not know the answers. We don't know. We're just May here. the force be with you. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we need to sign off for That's this. <laughs> probably not that one, but you know.
Are we growling or something? Isn't there a roar? Didn't we do well, that? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> we did something. We did it at the beginning because of the the intro. That's that's the right. intro. Yeah, yeah. Put in the terrible. comments what you think our sign off should be. <laughs> give us <laughs> give us some good feral suggestions. Maybe we should just all hold f bombs and like throw them at the screen. I don't know. Mine's packed away. Imagine, imagine yeah. I'm holding it. Imagine like, f bombs. For the future, this isn't for now. Right. It's not for now. Right. You can just yell "fuck, fuck." That's your. Fuck. That's I'll it. just lift my boobs so you can read. <laughs> feral. Yes. You're welcome. Maybe that's all we do. Just at the end, we're just like. <laughs> what <laughs> here we are okay bye we love you i'm gonna hit now bye, bye. <laughs>